Hi there, in this video we are going to explore creating a Gatsby site with GraphCMS using the Gatsby Source GraphQL plugin. So GraphCMS is a headless CMS that allows you to natively deliver content to pretty much any platform or any device. So once you sign up or sign in to GraphCMS, you will be presented with this screen to create a new project. If you already have a project, simply click on the button to create a new one and go ahead and give your project a name. I'm just going to give mine a simple description and we're going to choose the closest server to me where my data will be stored. So I'm going to create that project and then I'm going to head in and I'm going to create some schema. So on the schema editor, things look a little bit different if you haven't used the new graph CMS interface yet. Uh, but primarily click on the schema editor and inside of the schema editor we are going to create a model and we're going to give that model a name of product doesn't matter too much about the id or plural app id you can customize those if you prefer but right now we're just going to use all the defaults that are given to us by graph cms so we're going to give our product a name and the id is just name that's what i'll use when i'm querying the field and I can give a description for anyone that is editing content. They can see what this field is for. But I think name makes sense. I will use this as a title field. So when we are relating products later in a further demo, we can see that the name of the product is what we see in the relation tables. Uh, and we'll make this field required as well. Next, let's create another single line text. And with this time, we'll give this a name of slug the id is slug and we'll set this to required and i'm also going to set this to be unique and that means we can't have more than one page with this same product slug finally i'm going to use multi-line text for my description you could use markdown or rich text but i'll just use multi-line text and i'll give this a description i'm not going to set this as required or unique or anything this will just be a description that if we have it it will show and then I'm going to add a field uh, for an integer field, and this will be for the price. And I'm going to store the price in cents, so uh, we'll make that required as well. Now with that created, we just need to head over to the content editor, and I'm just going to go ahead and create some dummy products. Now we have all of those fields set, we'll go ahead and save and publish those. Let's head back and let's create another product. And let's go ahead and publish that. If we head back, we see that we have two of our products selected. Now, all that's really left to do inside of GraphCMS at this point before we begin to query this data inside of Gatsby is to get our API endpoint and also set the public permissions to open or to query any published content. So head to the settings and inside of API access, this is the endpoint to our API. I'm going to click content from uh, published stages can be queried and we'll save that. That means anybody accessing this URL can now make a public API request without any authentication required. And that's okay for this demonstration. We don't need to go into too much detail there. But if you want to restrict access, you can create a permanent org token. But we'll leave that for another video. Now let's go ahead and initialize a new package JSON and we'll add our dependencies. We'll need React, React DOM, Gatsby, and Gatsby Source GraphQL. We really don't need anything else, and I'm not using a CLI because the setup that we require is super simple. Great, now that our dependencies are installed, if we have a look inside of package.json, you'll see that we have all the dependencies that we set to install now available in here. So we can use these inside of our project, and the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a new file for a Gatsby config. Now, if you've worked with Gatsby before, you will know that this is a file where you pretty much just specify all of the plugins you require or any site metadata. And inside of here, this is where we will define our Gatsby Source GraphQL plugin. And it requires a few options. First of all, we need to resolve the plugin itself. And this is just Gatsby Source GraphQL. And then we need to specify the different options for the plugin. So the type name is GraphCMS. And the field name is GCMS. And finally, the URL is the URL to the GraphCMS endpoint that we had when we created the project. So with this file saved, that's all we need to do to initialize the Gatsby setup for Gatsby source GraphQL. When Gatsby runs and we have queries, it will create all the 
applicable types and it knows where to fetch that data because we have specified field name and the URL to get that data. So now let's create an index page that lists all of our products. So if we create a folder called source with the file pages, then we'll create an index page. Now all we need to do inside of here is create that file and all of those queries. So first of all, let's import React and we'll import GraphQL use static query and we'll also use the link component from Gatsby. I'm going to create a const here for our page query and I'll just call GraphQL and inside of these back ticks template literals, we will make a query to the GCMS and that is because we have the type available to us. Then we'll grab all of the products, we'll grab the name of our product and the slug and we'll also grab the price. Now let's create a functional component for our index page and using the hook use static query, we're able to run a query here and we'll call use static query and we'll pass in that page query. Now from data, I know from having used Gatsby before, the response will return GCMS and inside of there we will have products. So we are just nesting down into the data that we get back from graph CMS. Then that all, all that is left to do is render a page. And all we can do at this point is we can map through our products. And first of all, I'll just grab the slug and I'll spread everything into the product. And then we will create a new link for the product. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to create a page for each of these products. And we'll send this to this path. And inside of the link, all we'll pass is the name of our product. So we'll pass product.name. Now it's important with React to pass a key whenever we're looping over anything. So we'll use the slug as the key here because we know those are unique. And that's all that is left to do. And down at the bottom, we will just export index page. Now all that's left to do is run Gatsby develop. And we can use MPX to do that. And we'll use MPX Gatsby develop. That is now going away to graph CMS, pulling down all of the products and fetching the name, slug and price. And then what we should see on localhost 8000 is our page with a list of our products. So let's check that out. So great, we don't have a list, but what we have is we have the two links to our product pages. Now if we click on one of these, you'll see that the URL goes to slash products and then slash that slug that we provided. But we don't have any of those pages generated and that's what we'll do next. So let's go ahead and stop the server. And then inside of our root directory we'll create a new file and we'll call this gatsby node and this is where we can hook into some of the gatsby lifecycle methods and one of those is create pages so let's return an asynchronous function and we'll just structure graphql and actions and from actions we'll grab create page now i know I haven't used gatsby before what i'm requiring here but the gatsby documentation will walk you through all of this so like we did before we will run a query to graph cms and we will destructure data in just a second, but what we will do is we will await a call to GraphQL. And inside of here, we're gonna make a query to the products. And this time we need to pass in this stage and we need to pass in the stage published to Graph CMS. We'll pass the ID, we'll grab the name, and we'll grab the price and we'll grab the product slug. And that's all we need for this. Now I haven't worked with GraphQL before and Gatsby, I know that I can destructure data from this GraphQL call, then I can destructure GCMS, and then I can destructure product. So inside of the create pages function, now what we need to do is we need to loop through all of our products. We don't need to return anything, so I'm just using for each. And then from that, I would like to grab the ID and the slug. Then for each of those, we will create page. And we'll pass a path to our page, which will be slash products slash slug. And the component we require, we don't have yet, but we will create. And we'll just resolve that for now to our source directory, templates, product page. And finally, we'll pass in context. So inside of this page, we can then make another query to Gatsby to get the product information that we've queried. So in actual fact for this, we don't actually need the price or the name. We just need the ID and slug. So we can save this. And what we should see is we have a file that queries Graph CMS for all of our products that are published. It gets the ID so we can pass it down as context later and also the slug so we can build that URL and page. So before we do anything else, we need to create this file inside of our source directory and we need to create the product page template. So inside the source directory, we will do just that. And then inside of here, this is where we now need to import React. And then we need to import GraphQL from Gatsby. 
And this time we'll create a new function for our product page. And I know that I can destructure from the data, which will be our props in just a second. We'll grab GCMS and we'll grab the product data. And that'll make uh, some sense in just a moment. So inside of here, we will call React Fragment and we will pass in an H1 of our product. We'll call product.name. And then below here, we will call product price. Now, because I know that I want to display my price in euros, I can actually just take everything that I have inside of here and I can just return a formatted integer that we receive from GraphCMS and it will format it using euros. So all that is left to do now is export default product page and then above here we need to export a new const we need to call this page query and then this will make a graphql query we'll call this query product page query and this is the query that gets our id so we will get id and this id is what is given to us from gatsby node this is the id that we now have access to in the context and that is given to the query as a variable so what we can do now is we can make a call to graph CMS and we can get a product where the ID is that ID. And we'll go ahead and we'll get the name, the description, and also the price. Lastly, what we could do is we could display the description. Now, all that's left to do with this is run our Gatsby development server. Now we run that, it will make all of the queries. It will run through the Gatsby node file, create all of the pages for our product slugs and require this template. That template will then make a query to the data that is given to uh, Gatsby and it will create those pages and it can find the page and product that it needs based on the ID we gave it. So let's head over to our local host and we'll see that we have the long sleeve and the short sleeve T products given to us. And if we click on one of these now, you'll see that we have passed the slug to the URL like as before, but now we have our H1 with the product name. Then we have our paragraph tag with the product description. And then we have that formatted euro amount of the product. And if we click the short sleeve T, you'll see we have the same. We have the product name, description, and price. So this has just been a short video demonstration on how you can use Gatsby JS with GraphCMS to query product data and create programmatic pages.